comes to further take charge of the service, Minister Aaron Harris. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Amen. I'm glad to be here in Jesus' name. Amen. I do give honor to God who is the head of my life. I do not uh, take it lightly to stand here today. It means a lot when a man of God such as Bishop easily trusts you to stand behind the sacred desk. Amen. Um, I do give honor to my parents, amen, who were here. Um, Deacon Harris and Sister Hazel Harris. Amen. Amen. And I'm quite comfortable, more comfortable this time than last time. Come amongst family, amen. Last time I was trembling and shaking and sweating before I even got up. And I remember Bishop, he was like, you bring a change of clothes with you? I said, no, sir. And I already was wet before I came out here. And then I was even more wet when I left. He said, you're going to get sick. And I said, Lord Jesus. But this time I managed to make it here without sweating. Amen. So I feel a lot more comfortable, amen. I do miss my friend. I always look for mother easily. Amen. But I'm praying for her in Jesus' name, amen. And I'm gonna get out your way. Um, I do have a word from the Lord. Um, like he said, I don't sound like nobody else. I just, I'm just myself, and I hope that's okay with you, amen? Um, there's a song though, uh, if you put, put me in F. Uh, I woke up singing this song. Um, Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, yeah, there is something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a. Y'all know it. Sing it all. Oh, what a change in my. I got some witnesses this morning. I said, something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a... Yes, there is something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change. I'm singing, oh, oh, what a change in my life. Oh, it's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Yes, it's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Yes, it's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. in my life oh yes it's the holy ghost on the inside he's working on the outside it's the holy ghost on the inside working on the outside yes sir it's just the holy ghost on the inside working on the outside Yes, sir, confidence out, saying, oh. Yes, sir, in my. Can I hear you clap your hands this morning? Everybody clap, hey. Come on, let's have some church a little while. Hey. Hallelujah. Yes, it's something on the inside, working on the outside. That is something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. It's something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change. In my life, said we need power, power, Lord, power, Lord. Said we need power, said we need power, said we need power, said we need power. We need your power, we need your power. Said power, power, come on. Said power, power, said power, power. We need your power, we need your power. 
We need your power. Come on, talk. We need your power. We need your power. We need it. 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 We need your power. Lord, send your power now. Lord, send your power now. Lord, send your power now. Lord, send your power. Stay power. 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 Lord, send it up. 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 Power. Healing. Power. Healing. Power. Said healing. Power. Healing. Power. Saving. Power. Saving. Power. Saving. Power. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a Something on the inside, working on the outside. In my life. Put those hands together and give God praise for your change this morning. Y'all don't sound like y'all came to have church. Anybody been changed by God? Anybody glad to be saved? I said, is anybody just glad to be saved? My bills are not all paid, but I'm glad to be saved. Hallelujah. All my needs are met. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for salvation. I thank God for salvation. You got to learn how to get happy for salvation. You got to learn how to get happy for the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the baptism in his name. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. These are the things you ought to get happy about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody been converted? Anybody been delivered? Anybody been set free? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm making myself happy. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be saved. Hallelujah. Glad to be saved. Saved and glad about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I was waiting for my help. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be saved. Hallelujah. Sanctified. Hallelujah. I said sanctified. Sanctified. Save and sanctify. <laughs> Filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Speak in tongues. Hallelujah. As the Spirit give the utterance. I thank God for my salvation. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't happy. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. It shouldn't take too much when you're saved. Hallelujah. Walk up like this. Hallelujah. I said, I woke up like this. Hallelujah. Woke up like this. Hallelujah. Look, I'm here now. I'm at home now. Hallelujah. I woke up saved and glad about it. When I got out of my bed this morning, I was glad to say I'm saved. Hallelujah. It's another day that the Lord has kept me. Hallelujah. He didn't have to let me live. Hallelujah. It was his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. I didn't do everything right. Hallelujah. I didn't dot every I. I didn't cross every T. But I'm so glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. It's right where I stand. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost will bow down in my soul. Hallelujah. I know I got it. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, I know I got it. Tell your neighbor, say, I know I got it. I know I got it. I know I got it. Y'all quiet. I said, I know I got it. Shake somebody's hand and say, I know I got it. If you got the Holy Ghost, say, I know I got it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing about me, I'll have church all by myself. Yes, I will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do this in my room at home. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, I got a weak spot in my floor because I dance daily. Hallelujah. Music or no music, I dance daily. Hallelujah. Because you don't know my story. If, you, if I told you, you wouldn't even believe me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember the day and the hour. The Lord saved me. Hallelujah. He's yet saving. He's yet saving. He's yet saving. He's yet saving. Everything's moving by the power of God. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all feel what I feel, but there's a breakthrough about to come through this room. Hallelujah. 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 
God. You got to learn how to get happy for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because things ain't always going to be peachy. Things ain't always going to look right. I was thinking about reflecting on 2017. I feel so filled up. Hallelujah. Thinking about last year, so many things went wrong. That honestly, it felt like more things went wrong than right for me. Hallelujah. So the mere fact that I had to hold on to the, the things that salvation gave me to reach for my joy from that. The Bible says, with joy will we draw from the wells of salvation. And so when you have nothing else, you got to know that you saved and you got to be glad about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not my message. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Saved and glad about it. Hallelujah. You don't know what tomorrow may bring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know what tomorrow may hold. Hallelujah. And they said there ain't no praise from the grave. Hallelujah. They said there ain't no praise from the grave. I said there ain't no praise in the grave. So while you got breath in your body, you might as well give it what's due. Hallelujah. I said from every breath of my body, every breath I got belong to God. Every praise I can muster up belongs to God. Every praise I got belongs to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I couldn't say a word, I just <laughs> wave my hands and say, thank you, Lord. Somebody clap real fast and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He comes in a happy heart. He comes in a joyful heart. Come on. You got to get happy for Jesus. The Holy Ghost comes in a, man, a glad heart. Come on. The Holy Ghost comes in a glad heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I got the Holy Ghost, I wasn't tarrying. I was just thankful. When I got the Holy Ghost, I wasn't tarrying. I was just thankful. And he came down on the inside. And I began to speak into him. Hallelujah. And I've been speaking ever since. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Holy Ghost is here. Hallelujah. Can't be nobody but myself this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Melvin, Melvin had texted me. I'm getting the word. Melvin had texted me and said, make sure you send me your message. Send me your bullet points. I said, Melvin, I'm going to do my best. I said, I'm just a Holy Ghost preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> and all I know is I read the word and I get up and I let God do what he want to do through me. And I used to make me uncomfortable. And I used to feel uncomfortable about that. I couldn't do it like somebody else did it. But that's all right with me. Amen. That's all right with me. We're going to get in this word. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad for Jesus. Glad for Jesus. Glad for Jesus. See, some of us will get more happy about our salvation. We can witness a little bit easier. Some of the kids that you got ain't saved because you ain't happy about your salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take your seats in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad for Jesus. Give me about 20, 30 minutes. I'll get out your way. I promise you. Hallelujah. But he's going to come through this place. It's a privilege once again to be here. I was um, a little uncomfortable. I said at first, uh, I said, I looked at the roster who was on the um, flyers and I said, he got all these bishops. And then he got a, a practicing minister. <laughs> I said, Lord, I hope I come with a little bit of weight, some type of weight. <laughs> but I thank God for being here in Jesus' name. Give clap, um, clap your hands one more time for the head of this house, the angel of this house, Bishop Easley. And so Lady Easley, in her absence, there is a word from the Lord. And I'll be coming from Genesis 28, verse 10. And then I'll be coming down to Genesis, the 32nd chapter, starting at verse 24, when you have it signified by saying amen. And the word of the Lord reads Genesis 28 and 10. If it's your custom to stand, you can do so. If not, that's fine with me as well. Verse 10, it says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted up a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to the heavens. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, 
the father and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread, abro spread abroad to the west and to the east. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee alone until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. And Jacob awake out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Drop down to Genesis 32 and 24. And it says, And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. He said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. You may be seated in Jesus name. For the next new moments of mind that I wanna speak on the topic, I'm wrestling with a mystery. Wrestling with a mystery. Uh, when I began to preach, a few years ago, I remember my pastor always said that the word, the preacher must be the first partaker of the word, meaning any word that you preach is only as relevant as that that you've lived. So I'm literally living out this message, which is why I'm so just overwhelmed as I preach through what I'm living. Uh, we're talking about wrestling with a mystery, wrestling with something that you're not quite sure you have a name to put on it. You ever been in a season where you just can't put a name on what you're feeling you don't know what's going on. You don't know how to exp explain it. You're trying to express yourself to your friend or to your family. and You can't quite put a name on that that you're dealing with. You're wrestling with a mystery. Oxford's Dictionary defines the word mystery as something that is difficult or impossible to understand or even explain. A mystery is a person or thing whose identity or nature is puzzling or unknown. In Christendom, a mystery is a religious belief based on divine revelation regarded as beyond human understanding. I began to look up mystery and I found this um, excerpt from Baker's Evangel Evangelical Dictionary. And it says, scripture frequently describes God as one who knows all things, even that which the human mind could never know or finds incomprehensible. Thus he sees the secret intentions of human hearts, comprehends the seemingly unfathomable mysteries of the universe and most important, understands the meaning of human history. God understands human history because the events that comprise and correspond with his own intentions for our lives. He wills all that happens and does so to accomplish his own purpose. Somebody say it's a mystery. People on the other hand, both because of their sin and because of their human limitations, remain ignorant oftentimes of God's purpose when it's left to their own reckoning. God graciously responds to this human inadequacy by revealing his purpose to his people. When God's purpose is revealed in, his, in this way, the Bible frequently refers to it as a mystery. The content of divine mystery is painted in broad strokes in the Old Testament, takes on greater detail in the Gospels, and receives its finishing touches in Paul's letters to the church. In Daniel, where the term was first appeared in the scriptures, it refers to God's understanding of the symbols in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The biblical idea of mystery then reminds Christians that God holds the course of human events in his hands and has so shaped them that they work for the salvation of his people. Somebody say this mystery is working for my good. It also demonstrates the graciousness of God in revealing his redemptive purposes to prophets and apostles and through them to all who are willing to hear. I'm reminded of one of my favorite scriptures, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, you might probably know what it says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. 
God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. The same God was then seen of angels. That same God was then preached unto the Gentiles. The same God believed on in the world and then received up into glory. Somebody say, great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of how one God can be the father in, crea in creation. The same God can be the son in redemption story. The Holy Ghost in the church be all things to all people at the same time in many different places, but still be one God. Great is the mystery of godliness. The problem is many times we get lost because we're trying to understand the will of God concerning us, but it's a mystery. And you cannot really understand the mystery unless you tap into the spirit. The natural, the natural realm cannot understand the ways of God. The scripture says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. And when you try to lean into your own understanding, you'll never be able to understand what's going on in your life because the life of a Christian really never makes sense. It never really makes sense how you have all your needs met but not enough money in your pocket. It's a mystery. Amen? You see people come to church sick in their body but still got to praise. And the same condition that they praising God with, somebody's in a nursing home with and can't move their body. It's a mystery. Amen? And that's what just would happen here in the text. Here with Brother Jacob, he was wrestling with a mystery. Here in the story, we already go, we, most of us go to Sunday school Bible study. We know the story of Jacob, amen? So I'm not gonna belittle your, atten your, uh, your intelligence, but just give a little bit of background in case you don't know. The story of Jacob, he was the son of Isaac and the brother of Esau, amen? And we already know what happened. Jacob, Jacob was known as being a trickster, a supplanter, uh, an underminer, a schemer. And so I began to read and go back a few chapters to understand what God was trying to show me. And then he showed me how he, we often teach that Jacob tricked Esau out of the birthright as if Esau was a victim to Jacob's tricking. Amen. And they used to say, you can't trick a trick. And they said, <laughs> they, Jacob did not really trick Esau necessarily out of the birthright. Esau did not value what he had. And he was willing to lose and give up his birthright for something that would satisfy his stomach, his flesh. And many of us are in the same situation. And we're walking around mad and salty now because we lost something that God gave us and we sold it for cheap. And that's what happened with Esau. Esau exchanged his birthright to Jacob for a meal. Then Jacob went even further. And this is where he did kind of become a little trickster and deceptive. He, he, he heard that Isaac was going to pronounce the blessing over Esau. So he snuck in in Esau's place. Y'all know the story. And Isaac did not know it was Jacob. He thought it was Esau. And he laid his hands on him and he spoke the blessing over his life. Amen. Esau overheard what was going on and became angry with his brother because he felt like he had been stolen of his privileges as the oldest. Amen that rightfully belonged to him. And so what happened was Esau got angry and got in his flesh and said, you know what? Once my father passes away, I'm gonna kill my brother because he had no right to do what he did. And I was reading and I said, what do you want out of this portion of the text? And I kept hearing, watch out for Esau, watch out for Esau. And I realized there's many Esau's that operate in the church. I said, it's funny how Esau was willing to give up the birthright to bless Jacob. But once Jacob learned how to get the blessing without going through Esau, he had a problem with it. And many times you have, you have the encounters, encounters in church with people that operate under the spirit of Esau. They don't mind you being blessed as long as they can say they put that, their hands played a part in it. Amen. You ever have somebody that will help you get a job and they find, they find that you testify and I got a new job as long as they can say, but I helped them get an interview. Oh, I, you see Bishop Easley's new car? Yeah, but he didn't have gas last week. I put some money in it. You see, uh, Sister Monet, she, she looked nicer than you, but I gave her that dress. That's the spirit of Esau. And you got to watch out for the spirit of Esau in the church. They, they find what you being blessed as long as they played a part in it. But as, long, as, far, as soon as you learn how to get to God for yourself, all of a sudden you become arrogant. You know too much. You forgot where you came from. Oh, no, no, I didn't forget where I came from. I figured out how to get to where I'm getting to, amen? I found out how to get to God for myself. Many times we encounter many people that call, we call them parking lot prophets, personal intercessors. They meet you outside before you get to your car and they got a word for you. They didn't have no word in front of Bishop Easley. Hallelujah. But it's, it's quiet. There must be some parking lot prophets in here. Nobody had a word. Spirit was high as can be. Nobody had a word. 
But as soon as the church service is over and you get to, I get to my Kia, <laughs> Minister Harris, I was in there and I saw, I saw you going forth and the Lord said, no, 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 no. And many times when you establish relationships with these parking lot prophets, these personal intercessors that have a word for you outside of what your pastor told you, sometimes it goes against what your pastor told you. I know Bishop said that, but I don't think that was right. Oh, y'all don't have that problem here. I don't think that was right. I don't, I don't see that for your life. I don't see that for your life. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. When you learn how to get to God for yourself, that's when you have a problem with Esau. Tell somebody, watch out for the Esau's. Watch out for the Esau's. The next point I noticed with this text was that uh, Jacob's blessing was just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. That blessing was going to come regardless of who was there. I think. Jacob just had to be in place. And I suffer from this as well. But sometimes in church, we get so programmed that we think we know what's going to happen we know when God's going to speak. We know when God's going to move. So I'm not going to get there at 845 because they're going to be done praise and worship around 905. I don't really need to praise and worship today. I already listened to my Tasha Cobb's CD last night. So I'm going to miss that. I know they're going to sing this song, but God's really going to move when Bishop easily get up. You don't know when God's going to do what he's going to do. And when you really get desperate and want a blessing from God, you'll make it a point and a priority to be where God is. And you'll make it a point and a priority to be in the right place, in the right position, humbly waiting for the move of God to take place. Because you don't know if God's going to move in the morning prayer. You don't know if he's going to move when the scripture's being read. You don't know if he's going to move when the hymn is being something you don't want to hear. You don't know if he's going to move when she's going praise and worship, singing the song that's not your favorite song. You don't know if he's going to move when Bishop gets up. You don't know if he's going to touch you on the offering. So when you really want a move of God, you press your way to the presence of God and you expect him to move in any way you say here I am Lord just as I am without one plea I need a move from God amen so Jacob was in the right place at the right time and many of us miss our blessing because we're simply out of position the house is full here on Sunday mornings but I can guarantee it's not the same show up if he were to call for midday prayer it's not the same show up when we have revival it's not the same show out when we had Bible studies. It's really quiet. But when you have a need, you make it a priority to be here whenever God is here. Whenever the doors are open, I run in. The Bible said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So getting back to the text, uh, we have the story going on. And what happened was Jacob was threatened for his life. So Rebecca and Isaac said, it might be best for you just to go ahead with Laban because we want to preserve your life. Esau is already threatening to kill you. And we also want you to go ahead and get your wife, get your blessing. That's a blessing, amen? All right, all right. <laughs> so, um, Isaac, so Jacob obeys his parents and he goes upon his way. But the scripture makes it known that even though he left and escaped for his life, in his mind, he always had a little bit of hesitation in returning back because he knew that his brother was still angry about what happened. And he knew that there was still a chance that he might try to kill him if he returned to the place of promise, amen? And when I was talking about my, um, my, my topic the other day with my family, I said, um, sometimes the enemy uses intimidation to keep us from walking in the promises of God. He uses fear to kind of paralyze you from possessing, possessing it. Bishop was talking about possessing it. Um, the enemy pretty much preys upon the fact that he can paralyze you if he can say the right thing. He knows what we're afraid of. He knows what makes us uncomfortable. He knows what, what makes us uneasy. And until we get delivered from that particular thing, he will always be able to hold that thing over you and keep you from walking in the fullness of the things that God really has for you. If I never really got over low self-esteem, if I never really got over insecurities, I'm talking about me, if I never really got over a fear of speaking to people in crowds, I used to be very, very shut in and, and quiet. If I never got over those fears, I would never be doing what I'm doing today. But my blessing lied in my obedience and walking out the will of God for my life. So as long as I allow the enemy 
to hold those things over my head, I would never be able to walk out the will of God concerning me. And so this morning, I'm applying it to you and saying, I don't know what's your will of God, what the will of God is for your life, but until you get delivered from you, until you get delivered from people, until you get delivered from opinions and people and what they think about you and how you feel about yourself, until you get delivered from the man in the mirror, you'll never, ever, ever receive the fullness of the things that God really has for you in your life. Amen. I never thought I would be doing the things I'm doing today, but I thank God that I am who I am. I accept all that I am. The things I don't like, I accept all that I am. The things that I like, I accept all that I am, knowing that God had a purpose in mind when he made me who I was. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Amen. And so here in the text, Jacob had to overcome the fear that he had in his heart to go back to receive the promises that he knew were waiting for him. Because somebody, there's some promises waiting for you. There's some promises waiting for you, but you got to get over yourself. Hallelujah. So Jacob goes to sleep. I'm almost through. Jacob falls asleep on the rock. And the rock, uh, you know, I talk about the rock all the time. I'm not going to do it, though. And I say, here goes Jesus again. Here goes Jesus. Jacob falls asleep on the rock, and he finds himself in a place. He says, the Bible, on one translation, I can't remember what translation it was, it said, Jacob found himself in a lonely place. Meaning that he's out there. We just say, I'm out here on your word. That's all I got is your word. I'm standing out here. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have nobody behind me. I don't have nobody supporting or necessarily pushing me. Nobody understands where I'm at or what I'm going through. All I have is a word. And many times we find ourselves in that position where all we have, all I got is a word and a praise. That's all I got. And so Jacob was like, I'm out here in your word, Lord, I'm lonely, but you promised me. God made me a promise, and that's all I got to stand on. I'm sleeping on a rock. Maybe we don't get it. He used a rock for a pillow, but he still had to stand there and believe God that he was going to rule and he's going to have favor on his life. And sometimes those hard situations may give us pain in our bodies. They may bring pain to our emotional states and our emotional beings, but we have to stand on the word of God, knowing that when I get up off of this hard place, when I get my head up off of this rock, I'm going to possess the land that God has for me. Hallelujah. And hell or high water, no matter what comes in my way, I'm going to possess the promises of God that are for my life. I don't know what nobody's going through on this morning. Hallelujah. But you got to change your mindset and stop focusing on that hard place. Stop focusing on that rock. Stop focusing on the inconvenience. Stop focusing on the discomfort that you're feeling your body. And focus on the promises of God that are upon your life. Hallelujah. Because God has so much greater for you than this hard place that you're going through. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praise. Say, I'm in a hard place. But I believe God is going to work a miracle on my behalf. Hallelujah. I said, I'm in a hard place. But I believe that God's going to work a miracle on my behalf. Hallelujah. I'm getting there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jacob falls asleep and God comes to him in a dream. I'm encouraging myself this morning. Hallelujah. And in the dream, God does not prophesy anything that he did not already know. What God came back to do is what prophecy really does. He reiterated the word that already came forth. So hallelujah. I thank God for you. What happened was Jacob fell asleep and the word of God, the word of God came to him and what he did was he reminded him of the word that was spoken to him by his father. Hallelujah. He didn't tell him anything brand new. He reminded him and sometimes God got to put us to sleep because he can't get your attention when you're awake. Some of us are too busy. We're too busy in this and that. And we can't really hear the word of God for our lives. And we've already been told several times before by our father what God has for our lives. But because we're so busy at work and we're so busy meddling in somebody else's business, we're so busy being messy on Facebook, we're so busy taking selfies on the gram that it causes us to forget the things that God already spoke. So God says you're too busy, go to sleep, lay down somewhere sit down and be humble hallelujah <laughs> yes that's what God said so Jacob lays on the rock and God puts him to sleep and he reminds him of the word that's been spoken over his life and Jacob woke up and said I have no reason to fear
because Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. It's been spoken once, hallelujah, and it's been spoken now once again. So I have no reason to fear, hallelujah. The Lord is my life. Hallelujah. So God comes, I'm getting there, hallelujah, and he confirms or reiterates and reminds him of the prophecy, the word that's over his life. And all we need sometimes is a little bit of a reminder. That's all we need. We don't need, I don't know about you, but I don't need no more new prophecies. God done said enough, hallelujah. He done said enough to me. I'm 30 years old. He already done said enough. And I'm still waiting for some things that people done said to me to come to pass. And I said, Lord, I don't need no more prophecies spoken over my life. I need you to fulfill the ones that you've already spoken. But Lord, while I'm waiting on you, don't mind me if I ask for a reminder here and there. Because sometimes my flesh causes me to forget the things that God said about me. Sometimes my low self-esteem causes me not to believe the things that God said about me. But Lord, if you don't mind, send me a reminder of the promises upon my life. You said in your word that I'm the head and not the tail. But Lord, send a reminder. Lord, you said I'm above and not beneath. But Lord, send a reminder. You said I'm the head and not the tail. You said I'm a lender and not a borrower. You said I'm healed and not sick. But Lord, send a reminder. If you don't mind on this morning, Lord, stop by for a little while and remind me of your word. If you don't mind, Lord Jesus, come see about me, hallelujah, and remind me of your word. Remind me of my promise. God's gonna do just what he said. God's gonna do just what he said. Every word he spoke over your life, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It won't return to him void. You got to walk in that thing with boldness. You got to walk in that thing with confidence. You got to rebuke and bind the devil of your mind. You got to rebuke the bind the devil of your will. Rebuke and bind the devil of that soul. And say, I am what God said I am. I will be all that God said I'll be. I will be all that God said I'll be. I'll prove the doubters wrong. I'll prove the doubters wrong. You don't know who I am in God. I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong in the Lord. My faith believes in him. My faith never failed me yet. I believe God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. Clap your hands and give God praise. I had to get that out of my system. Hallelujah. I had the reminder of what God said. Hallelujah. See, real friends remind you of what God said. They don't remind you of your inconsistencies. A real friend don't remind you of your weaknesses. A real friend don't remind you of your shortcomings. They remind you of the word of God over your life. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, do you mind reminding me? Hallelujah. I dare somebody looking under heaven and say, I believe God. Somebody raise your hand and say, I believe God. I believe God. Somebody say it from your heart and from your soul. Say, I believe God. I see my situation, but I believe God. Somebody say, I believe God through every situation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I believe God. Woo! I believe God. I believe God and he's going to do just what he said. It's hard to believe God. I'm almost through. When Jacob was wrestling with the angel of the Lord, the man, the mystery that we know was God. I said, what is the significance of the wrestling? And I found out that it was significant because many times we fail to realize that when a promise is spoken over our lives, there is a gap of time between the declaration of the word and the manifestation of that word. And on the in-between of these two places is where we get stuck in the wrestling match. We wrestle with, do we really believe God? 
How is he going to do it? When is he going to do it? Are we willing to hang in there? Can we really stand the pressure that it takes to hang in between a promise that's been spoken and a manifestation of that word? So what was going on is Jacob got desperate. And I don't know about nobody else, but sometimes it takes those hard situations. Last time I preached about stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'm always preaching about the hard places because I know what it's like to be in a hard place. What was going on was Jacob was symbolizing what it's going to take for us if we really want to receive the blessings of God. When a spoken prophecy or promise goes to pass, I mean, it's spoken into the atmosphere. The enemy, the prince of the air, hears exactly what was spoken into the word, by the word of God into the air. And it's his job to try to block you from getting to that manifestation. He can't stop it from coming to pass. But if he can get in your ear for a little while and cause you to doubt the word that's been spoken and wrestle with you long enough until you get tired in your body, tired in your spirit, and you say, Lord, I'm too, I'm too tired. I'm tired of praying. I'm tired of fasting. I'm tired of coming into Bible study. I'm tired of hearing this word. But you got to make up in your mind that no matter what it takes, I'm all in. No matter what it takes, I'm all in. See, some of us receive promises that are not even pertaining to ourselves. Some of our praise is going to bring our sons and our daughters, our wives and our husbands to God. So they can't, they can't afford for you to get tired in the wrestling match. You got to wrestle like with all your strength. You got to wrestle with all that you've got. And little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. You got to get down on the floor sometime. I love when I come to church and I see Mother easily. Glory be to God because my generation, we get so prideful that we care so much about our clothes. We care so much about our hair. We care so much about our face being beat. Hallelujah. That we don't want to get ugly before God. But when you really, really know that you have a promise that's before you, you got to get on your knees sometime. And you got to pray and say, Lord, here I am, Lord. I'm all in. I'm going to wrestle until the promise comes to pass. And some of us have got to get out of our flesh this morning and stop trying to look so cute hallelujah stop dancing these that these practice footsteps hallelujah and get in the face of god stop talking, trying to worry about crossing your feet and dipping and sliding and going in circles but get down dirty with god and learn i'm gonna wrestle for my promise i'm gonna wrestle for my breakthrough i'm gonna wrestle till god come see about me i'm gonna pull on heaven until god answers my prayer and to my prayer for you tonight for this morning is I don't know what you need on this morning. Your need may not be my need. And my need may not be your need. My promise may not be your promise. Your promise may not be my promise. But we all need something from God. Anybody need something from God? Anybody need something from God? I don't care what the promise is. If you really need something from God, I dare you to do warfare and praise God like it's already done. Praise God like it's already done. Come on, praise God like it's already done. Put a praise on your lips. Praise and prayer. Praise, pray, and fight. Somebody needs to learn how to pray, praise, and fight. Praise, pray, and fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, you got to pray, praise, and fight. Sometimes you got to clap your hands and drive the enemy out of your life. If you got to clap, 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 clap real fast and drive the enemy out your life. Put a praise on your lips. Put a praise in your feet. Put a praise on your lips. Put a praise in your feet and begin to pull God down. Say, Lord, I believe everything you said about me. Lord, I believe everything you spoke over my life shall come to pass. And I'm here, Lord, and I won't let go until you bless my soul. I'm standing here on your word and I won't let go until my husband's saved. I won't let go until my wife acts right. I won't let go until my son puts the weed down. I won't let go until fornication no longer in my household. I won't let go. I won't let go until every promise you spoke over my life comes to pass. Clap your hands and say, I believe God. Clap your hands and say, I believe God. 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 
I'm already done, hallelujah. If we can stand all over our feet over the room and just begin to declare in the atmosphere that I believe God, come what may, I believe God. It don't look like what it's gonna be. The song said trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. But I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. He's never failed me yet. Everything he said about me, everything he's spoken over my life shall come to pass. I'm resting with a mystery, but I believe God. I won't give up. I won't give in. I'll keep the faith. I'll press on with my praise. I believe God. He's never failed me yet. My faith looks up to thee. My faith pulls on him to act on my behalf. But do you believe God? Do you believe God? Do you believe God? God's gonna make a way. God's gonna open doors that no man can shut. Do you believe God? Do you believe God? God's gonna make a way. He's gonna provide for you. But do you believe God? I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Clap those hands if you believe. Hallelujah. 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 I'm through. I gave what I had. Sometimes we find ourselves wrestling with a mystery. But it's our job to make sure that we're up for the fight. It's our job to make sure that we don't give up in the midst of going through. Hallelujah. If we lift our hands all over the building. I'm gonna begin to pray. Cause some of us, all we need is a little bit more faith. All we need is a reminder of the word of God that's been spoken over our lives. I don't know who it is or who may, who all it may be, but if you are believing God for a promise, but can't quite see your way through it, and you just say, Lord, I need a little bit more faith, just raise your hand and say, Lord, that's me. Look, like it's everybody. If we can take the next few moments and forget about ourselves and believe God for our brother or our sister. Because sometimes we don't have the faith to believe God for ourselves. But something about God, the mysterious thing about God is he gives us the strength to believe God for somebody else. And while you're praying for somebody else, God begins to move on your behalf. Oh, hallelujah. If we can join hands in the room, you give me about 10 minutes, I'll be out your way. Only if you're a believer, join hands with another believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I count to three, I want you not only to pray to strengthen the, the faith of your brother, but I want you to begin to tug on that neighbor, symbolizing they're going to overcome the wrestling match. You got me? On the count of three, I want you to begin to pray for your neighbor, but I want you to tug on them, symbolizing they're giving them strength to overcome the wrestling match. Anybody gonna pray with me this morning? Anybody gonna pray with me this morning? Hallelujah. One, two, three. Come on, begin to pray for your neighbor. Come on. Come on, begin to pray and intercede for the wrath of your neighbor. Begin to intercede on behalf of your neighbor. Lord, we believe you this morning. That's what you're gonna do, just what you said. You're not a man that you should lie, oh God. You're not the son of man that you should repent. We believe you on this morning, God. Strengthen our faith on this morning, Lord. Make a way out of no way this morning. Heal sick bodies on this morning. Deliver the bound on this morning, God. Give us strength on this morning. Give us strength to fight, hallelujah. Give us strength to wrestle, Lord. Give us the blessing that you spoke over us, God. Help us on today, oh God. Show up and meet the needs of your people. Come on and fight, Zion, come on. Pull on Jesus, come on. Pull on Jesus. Begin to tug on your neighbor. Tug on your neighbor. 
Tug in them strength. Tug on your neighbor. Tug on your neighbor. Give them strength this morning. Strength for the journey. Strength for the fight. Strength for the battle. You're going to win this fight. You're going to win the battle. Come on and fight this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe God? Come on. Come on. Do you believe God? Do you believe God? Hallelujah. 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 Put a praise on your lips. Put a praise on your lips. Put a praise on your lips. Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. You'll do just what you say. Make a way, Lord. 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 Make a way out of no way. In the name of Jesus. Make a way out of no way. Make a way, Jesus. Make a way, Jesus. Come on through, Jesus. Come on through, Jesus. Come on through, Jesus. Make a way, Jesus. Oh, oh. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, Holy Ghost. Come on through, Jesus. Come on through, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on through. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Send on deliverance. Send on the spirit of deliverance. Send on deliverance, Lord. Send on deliverance. Hallelujah. Break every fetter this morning. Loose every shackle. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't get tired, Zion. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, pull on Jesus. Call on, pull on Jesus. Even if it's one soul. Even if it's just one soul. Even if it's just one soul. Pull and fight for your sister. Somebody fight for your sister. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's daughter. Fight for it. Fight. 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 Fight like it's yours. Fight like it's yours. Fight like it's yours. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for the hand of the Thank God for deliverance. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Lord. Break it up, Lord. Hallelujah. Break up the fallow ground. Break up the fallow ground. Meet the needs of your people. Meet the needs of your people. Meet the needs of your people. Send on the living power in the name of Jesus. Go down in that belly. Hallelujah. 
Shamani Olokobosa. Go down in that belly. He come on Ololobosaya. In the name of Jesus. Hey. We wage war on this morning. We wage war on this morning. War on the enemy. War on the enemy. Come on. War on the enemy. War on the enemy. War on the enemy. Take it back. Take it by force. Come on. In the Messiah. He come on. Come on. We declare war this morning. Come on. We declare war on this morning. Come on. We declare war on this morning. Come on. We declare war on some more. We declare war on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get what you need. Come on. Get what you need. Get what you need. Tell the devil he's a liar. We plead the blood against him. We plead the blood against him. The blood in your mind. The blood in your will. The blood in your emotions. You will not go through depression. You will not commit suicide. Wage war on the enemy. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have to take your life. Wage war on the enemy. Hallelujah. Fight with your praise. Fight with your praise. Come on. Fight with your praise. Come on. Fight with your praise. Come on. Fight with your praise. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, give us a praying spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, Lord. Send on victory this morning, Lord. Send on victory, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Now that we prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing I always was taught back home. Hallelujah. Is that your praise. And your belief in God. Should match the praise. On your lips. I said the praise on your lips and the praise in your feet should match your belief in God. So if you believe in God this morning and you believe it's going to do just what he said, I dare you to begin to praise him like it's already done. Begin to praise him like it's already done. Begin to praise him like you believe it's already done. I dare you to praise God like it's already done. If you can't praise them for yourself, praise them for somebody else. If you can't dance, then clap. But if you believe God, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. I believe 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 God. Hey, say I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Come on, help me say I said I believe God. 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 Well, 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 well. Just reach over and grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, I finally figured out what the problem is. I've been wrestling with a mystery.
Come on. Go find somebody else. Say, neighbor, I have, I have lost my last night of losing sleep. Look at your neighbor and say, no more losing sleep. Because I found out what the problem is. I'm wrestling with a mystery. And so, so what God did this morning is he came and gave you a reminder. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. Even you and your behavior has not stopped God from what he's spoken over your life. You just wrestling with a mystery, that's all. Just let go and let God. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to answer your own questions and just go on and celebrate God and grab hold to him and say, listen, I missed you before, but I will not let you go until you bless me. Somebody shout glory. See, see the devil is trying to destroy your mind because he's trying to get you confused concerning the mystery. The devil is telling you, oh, God don't want you because you know what you did. And so you, you're trying to figure out the mystery. But the truth is, the mystery ain't about who you are or what you did. The mystery is about what he did in spite of who you are. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. In spite of everything the devil has done to try to take you off course, God still says you're in the plan. 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 Somebody shout, it's a mystery. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Woo! My, 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 my. Woo! Come on, come on. Are you glad you're in the plan today? Stop trying to figure it out and just thank God that you're in the plan. You can't figure this out. Not on your own. You can't figure this out. Not on your own. No, 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 you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. It's a God thing. It's a God thing. It's a God thing. Woo! Ma, 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 ma. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Proverbs says this, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I wish I had some seasoned folk in here. Anybody, anybody almost gave up, but you're glad you didn't give up? I want you to find somebody because that means you are authorized to help somebody else. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Because you didn't give up, that means you are authorized now 
to go back and help somebody else. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't give up, better days are coming. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't throw in the towel, if you don't quit, if you don't walk away, better days are coming. Better days, better days. I dare you to praise him for better. Praise him for better. I wish I had my strength this morning, but I dare you to praise him for better. Somebody shout, I'm praising him for better this morning. Better. Woo. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor, say neighbor, you already looking better. Woo, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Get yourself a praise partner. Look at him and say, you're already looking better. You're already, you're already looking better. Your, your praise is better. Everything, everything about you now is better. Your smile is better. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, you're already looking better. Wow. 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 Don't you dare give up. I don't care who gives up on you. God is never going to give up on you. Come on, tell somebody, say, I don't care who gives up on you who walks out of your life God said he'll never leave you oh hallelujah God said he'll never leave you nor will he forsake you somebody shout as long as God is here you gonna be all right you gonna be all right come on somebody shout you gonna be all right you better receive it in the spirit because you're wrestling with a mystery. If God, come on. I know this is kind of rude. But I want you to look at somebody and just point at them. Make sure you get their attention. Say, if God before you, who can be against you? And sometimes we need a reminder. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I come with a Holy Ghost reminder for you this morning. Come on, shake your finger. Say, if God before you, who can be against you? Whew. Well, I want you to say it in your anointed voice. Say, neighbor, if God be for you, sometimes you just got to let that settle in right there and don't say nothing else. Say, neighbor, if God be for you, just think about it, just think about it, just think about it, just think about it. Come on, say it one more time. Say, neighbor, if God be for you, Who? Who? Come on, look, say who can be against you? He starts that scripture off by saying, what shall we say to these things? Because sometimes the devil will use things. Yes, 
sometimes the devil will attack your things. So what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who? And then sometimes he'll use people. So the devil will use things and he will use people. What a rhema word we heard from heaven today. Anybody enjoy this word today? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. What a rhema word we received today. My God, what a word. I, I want to move on, but I, I'm just enjoying this right here, this spirit that we are just, the Lord is just healing right now. He's... He's delivering, he's setting free, he's saving. Oh my God, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Listen, if you're here and you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, be ashamed to leave this place after hearing such a profound word from God and you have not given your life unto the Lord. It would be such a shame after hearing and being under such an anointing this morning that you leave out of here the same way you came in. The Bible tells us, they were asked a question on the day of Pentecost, what shall we do? Peter responds by saying, repent. Which means to have a change of heart, change of mind, and change of direction. I want you to know that as long as as you continue to live, you'll be repenting. You never outgrow repenting. So there are individuals that say, well, look, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I want you to know after every message, the word is going to find you and challenge you in some kind of way that you have to elevate and move. Peter said on one occasion, I die daily. I die daily. And so don't sit there and wrestle anymore about your choices and all of them. Make a choice now to start moving in the right direction. Are you going to dot every I and cross every T? No, and that's why we're going to continue to keep preaching because the word of God is going to find you. The Bible says he that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. He lets us know that it's a daily process. But I want you, you're here today and saying, look, I need to start my process. He says, repent. Then be baptized, every one of you.